Kayla Gabay. Uh, I was born in January 22nd, 2003, so I'm 17 years old. And I'm from San Diego in California. And I'm really passionate about inspiring teens to take action on political and social issues. And one quote I kind of live by is just to be on the right side of history. So that's something I think about every day when I'm going through my daily actions. My brand, I would say, is probably my organization, Revolution Now. And so that's a teen-run international multimedia platform that strives to encourage our generation to, as I said above, take action. And um, it aims to show teenagers that we really deserve to take space in these political and socioeconomic decisions. As I said, uh, we're in a multimedia organization. So, you know, right now we're trying to grow and expand that aspect of the organization. We just launched our first RevNow original podcast, and we're also in the process of creating our RevNow videos platform. So, so far we have one video series on that platform. So we're hoping to grow through, through more through like the multimedia aspect, but then we're also working to create more brand awareness through our social media team. And we've also been launching campaigns that talk about social issues such as our sexual assault awareness campaign. So we hope that through these different mediums, we could just improve our ability to help other teams make an impact. So I used to be a freelance journalist, which would basically mean that I would just create my own articles and then pitch them to different publications and try to get others to publish them. And I did that for a year. And throughout that process, I learned a ton about myself and about political journalism. And I found it to be a really empowering experience and a way for me to kind of channel all my thoughts and opinions on the world into actually creating an impact and take an action as a teenager. And so throughout this process, I ended in almost like my big break, which was getting published as a contributor for Teen Vogue. And through that experience, I just really felt like I wanted to give other teenagers the same opportunity to become involved in political journalism or even just make their mark on politics and social issues in their own unique ways. And I kind of used that momentum from my publication, Teen Vogue, to start my own organization with that goal. I'd say now it's the great team that I've built in my community. Um, I just get all these great teenagers from around the world who are constantly pushing me as the founder and as the editor in chief to keep innovating our content and to just keep putting out all these new projects and pushing ourselves further. But then there's also the messages we get from our viewership and our readers telling us that our content has helped them broaden their perspective or helps them take action in their own ways. And those really keep me going because that shows us that the work that we're putting in is really getting us somewhere and it's really making an impact even if we can't always see it. So now that I have a fairly large staff, I'm able to take a more broader approach. So I really just oversee and manage different teams at RevNow. So I manage our social media team and then also our writing staff. So that would be mostly editing articles, editing posts, um, just checking in and seeing if people need me to help them with um, certain projects. And then I also will spearhead my own projects and be the person others come to when they want to do something new at RevNow. And I also a lot of times am the one who will um, decide when we need to change our feed or our aesthetic. So those are a few things I do. I also have um, complete control over our web design as I'm the one who did design our website. So I also create our articles and I publish them in, um, in like, the aesthetic ways. So I like, you know, I put in all the photos and I upload. I'll say the first year was the most difficult because, and I think that this is something that all entrepreneurs go through, no matter like what their project is, is you really have to become a jack of all trades. So like I said before, I mean, I didn't know anything about web design going in, but I had to learn how to design the website. Um, I didn't have any staff writers yet. So I had to write all the articles that were gonna be coming onto the web. And then I also had to really learn the in, ins and outs of marketing and be able to figure out how to 
market us myself so that I could get more people and get our audience and what would become our staff. So that took a lot of patience and creativity at first, but once we started building our team, it got exponentially easier. You know, now I have a great staff that I can lean on and they can lean on me and um, it's just a lot easier to get things done. But, you know, that being said, I still struggle sometimes. I think that we all do. So I think that's something I'd like to like make sure is very clear, you know, it's not always easy. I mean, even this year with COVID-19, you know, uh, first we wanted to launch RevNow videos in a much larger way. You know, we had all these web series, we had a whole production team that was meeting every other week to start our plans for production. And then because of the pandemic, those plans kind of all fell through. And we're still trying to find new ways to, uh, for us to rethink the RevNow videos aspect and ways to launch that with um, more videos behind it. So, you know, every, I think that any found, founder is always going to be having some struggles and kind of having to always look for solutions to hard problems. But I think that's just part of the process. And I think that we have to have compassion for ourselves that we're not always going to have all the answers right away. So really, we want to get to a point where we're just providing more direct opportunities for teenagers. So for example, maybe more mentorship programs. Right now, the mentorship aspect of the magazine is really the higher ups in the staff, helping people who are just coming onto the staff and providing feedback on articles and things like that. But I would love to make our mentorship, um, our mentorship abilities more accessible for just our audience and our viewers. So perhaps setting up some sort of mentorship program like that. I would also love to create a RevNow grant system where we can actually provide funding to teenagers from around the world to start their own media projects that we can then turn into RevNow original projects. So I'm really excited about that idea. I think that could enable many teams to create more great projects and it would also help us get the most innovative and exciting content out there. So that's definitely an end goal for me. I would say no. I mean, Revolution Now really evolved a lot. At first, it was a political magazine, and I wouldn't say it had as much direction as it has now, but just over time, it became the multimedia platform it is today, and it really zeroed in on that focus to um, increase youth involvement. So I would say that was like complete evolution from where it started off. And, you know, I want to say, like, I always dream big, and I always... I always knew that I was going into this with the plan that this was going to become something impactful. Like I didn't want to limit myself with a bad mentality that I wouldn't be able to get to get anywhere significant. But that being said, the way that it became what it is today, I didn't foresee happening. And I'm so grateful for all the people who enabled us to get to that point. Like one sentence, it would be strives to increase youth political involvement by providing teens with the information and resources they need to make change. And so in that, that would be providing them with first articles that talk to them about current events and are almost like political breakdowns of different policies or maybe politicians, but then also providing them with resources on how to make their own protests, how to um, start their own organization, you know, put a policy through legislation different things like that, so that they then have that information where they can go take everything that they've learned from us and actually do something about it. And then I would say the last thing that we really do to provide those resources and that education on how to create change would be, we highlight other teenagers who are doing that already themselves. You know, we highlight other teen leaders and have them share their expertise and their tips and tricks on how they're creating change so that other teens can get that inspiration and also learn from them directly how they can also be a teen change maker. Yeah. So, um, my life goals are, you know, I'm still 17, I'm still in high school, I'm figuring it out, but two things I'm very interested in are perhaps becoming a humanitarian journalist, which would basically mean that I would go to different groups of people and provide them with humanitarian aid while also um, uplifting their voices through journalism and giving them a voice, you know, writing about them or perhaps making documentary series about them 
and giving them an outlet to uh, share their stories. And then I'm also interested in perhaps going into politics, maybe joining Congress or something like that. But, you know, as I said, I'm still trying to figure out my path. Although I know whatever that is, I don't think I'm going to be happy if I'm not doing something where I'm helping with social issues or um, just creating a better place. So as cheesy as it sounds, if I'm not making the world a better place, I don't think I'm going to be that happy. So I know that whatever I do is going to be something like that. So that have helped me out over the years. I mean, there's just basically even just the professors that have emailed me back or I've met with once time, once in a while to like help me with one of my projects. So there's those people. And then I'd say my most like long-term mentor, her name is Ellen, I Ellen Iones. And um, she is a, she was a teacher at a summer program that I went to when I was 14 years old. And she's actually the one who started me off on my freelance journalism career. So, you know, she would read my articles, she gave me advice on how to pitch to people. Um, and she really helped me create, you know, my own, my own personal brand, I would say, of who I am. And um, since then, you know, we only were able to be in person that one time when I was 14. But over these years, she's just continued to help me with different opportunities. She writes my letters of rec for so many opportunities that I've applied for. Um, and honestly, like I would not get the opportunities I've gotten or be where I am today right now if it wasn't for her. Uh, she continues to give me so much support, um, even from being so far away and not even being able to see me in person. So I'm super, super grateful for I would say, like, do you mean like people I look up to? Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know. It's. So the people I mentioned before, for sure, um, just as mentors pushing me to be better, you know, honestly, I probably go back to my RevNow team. I think that they motivate me the most because they're always coming to me with all these ins like inspiring and innovative projects of their own. And they're also always using their own voices and like sharing their own stories in order to help other teenagers, which I find super, super inspiring. Um, there's one girl, especially on our staff, named Hannah Williams, and she's a sexual assault survivor. And, you know, she came in, the first article she wanted to write was, she wanted to write about her experience getting assaulted at her college campus, because she knew that she needed to raise awareness for it. So, you know, she went through this whole process of writing about something that, of course, was super traumatizing for her, because she wanted to educate other teenagers. And through that article, we actually had so much feedback from teenagers who were like, I didn't understand this before and now I do and I'm going to completely change the way I look at this issue. And then since then she was also a huge, huge part of spearheading our uh, sexual assault awareness week campaign. You know, she was the co host for videos that we did during that week and she did her own um, videos on our Instagram story shared her own story again. And I just think that that's so inspiring that she would take something that's so personal for her and so hard to talk about and talk about it to literally thousands of people just because she wants to help educate other teenagers. So I find that super inspiring. And then, I mean, you know, besides her, the rest of my staff too, they're just, they're always coming to me with these different exciting ideas, even if it's just for an article or like a person they really want to interview and they're going to go out and do whatever they can to find that person and get them to do an interview with them. Or it's a workshop that they want to host on the RevNow platform or really anything like that. Or even the projects that they're doing outside of RevNow that it's like, while they're helping writing for our magazine or our, um, on our podcast or anything like that, they're also creating their own organization. So I am constantly inspired by the rest of the RevNow team and they really motivate me to keep being the best leader I can be. There is the, shameless self-promotion. I mean, you can check out Get Involved page at RevNow and see the resources we have there. But um, putting that aside, seriously, I think that the most important advice I can give is to just start. I mean, like I said, I did not have it all figured out when I began. I didn't even know what my magazine was going to evolve into, but I just knew that I had to get started and I had to put these ideas I had on 
on paper or on, you know, on this magazine, even if I didn't have all of it figured out yet. And so I think that if you just start with passion and the willingness to work hard and figure it out along the way, you'll get yourself there over time. And I think that a lot of people, especially our age, think that they need to completely understand the field before they go into it. But no one ever fully understands. And you can't let that fear of failure or fear of not knowing everything stop you from actually just beginning and seeing where it takes you. So that would be like my one major piece of advice. Yeah, I mean, if any of you are interested in joining the RevNow team, um, the best way to get our application information would probably be to just DM us. So you can DM RevNow Magazine on Instagram and I can send you personally the information how you could apply. And then we accept applications on a rolling basis. So you can apply at any time and we'll always review your application. So yeah, I just wanted to share that. But I also just want to say thank you and for um, this indulge for sharing my story and letting us talk to your audience. Thank you.